welcome to Jatai Academy. Today we're going to cover the differences between razor cutting and scissor cutting. The first one is pretty obvious. Whenever I'm going to cut hair straight across and I'm going to cut a solid line, when I cut hair with a razor it's always going to be softer than if I cut hair with a scissor. But I'm still introducing movement with both of them. If I do a scissor, the physical mechanics of how I cut the section introduces movement to the hair. It's a slight movement, but it's still there. So as I comb this straight down, I have my line. As you notice the blade start to close, you'll see the hair slightly get pushed out of the blade. So when I do, that's making it longer towards the right. I'm sorry, longer towards my left and shorter towards the right. So I'm cutting this angle into it. If I hold one hair out, it's gonna actually be angled on the very tip of the hair. So I'm introducing a slight movement based upon which way I close the blade. Now when I'm cutting hair with a razor, the same thing happens. Whichever way that I razor this section is introducing movement to it. So I'm gonna to try to get this real blunt. I hold everything straight down. I cut from the center forward because the way I apply a cut line with a razor is the razor has to move. It has to have a stroke that goes up and down against the hair. It's not just me applying pressure, it's me applying movement of the blade against the hair and that's what's going through and cutting the line. So this physical stroke is actually what's cutting the line. If I was to cut this section from the front towards the back, that's the way that hair is gonna move because I'm cutting an angle into it because of the application of the cut. So if I have one hair with a scissor, it's gonna be just at a slight angle. If I have one hair and I cut it with a razor, it's gonna be at a much steeper of an angle. The steeper that angle is, the more movement that I get to it. The second thing is that the larger the stroke of the blade, the softer that the line gets. So if I take a really broad stroke, it's gonna soften these edges up much more than if, I stick a, than if I take a tight, close stroke. Now you can get a softer line with a scissor by point cutting. So by holding that down, point cutting in across, I end up with a softer line as well. This line is still going to be more blunt and have less movement when compared to the razor cut. The razor, because the stroke is broader, it's lighter and has more movement to it because the angles are steeper. The next thing you can do is, the next difference is when I go through and do internal texture, if I take the razor and I go through an internally channel cut, I'm getting a much steeper angle and can take out a lot more hair without visible separations. Or I can make it much more visible with a more seamless transition. Whereas with a scissor, I can go through and get a similar look if I was to stand up and come through and channel through like this. It's still gonna be much more blunt and much more solid than the razor section though. So the main difference is gonna be the amount of softness of the cut and the amount of movement that you have. Now I can control the amount of softness and movement with a razor much more precisely than I can with a scissor. But the razor demands much more discipline and much more of a structured methodology than you may think. Because it's real easy to go through and take this section and just haphazardly go through and just play around and next thing you know, you end up with no shape and nothing but a stringy mess of hair. So even though they're both hair cutting tools, they're really worlds apart in their approach, their methodology, and the thought process that goes behind it. This can build a much more structured, solid shape than this can. But this can do things that the scissor can never even possibly do. Because of that, it requires a more intense study. It's not just a, a tool that you're just gonna use to texturize hair. You can do some amazing things with this, but it takes study and practice. 
in order to understand the tool. It's simple to understand, okay, I comb down, the broader the stroke that I make, the more hair I remove and the softer that it gets. But it takes a lifetime to really understand the intricacies and to master this. Pretty much the same as this, because this is pretty simple to understand too, right? You comb it down, you cut it, you got a straight line. Unless the hair's curly, or unless the hair has a cowlick, or unless you didn't, unless your scissors are dull, and you didn't pull back when you cut, and now you got a crooked line. So, while there are two different schools of thought, one is not better than the other. They're different. And I think in order to be a great hairstylist, a great hair cutter, you have to master both schools of thought. It goes back to the philosophy of cutting hair. There's two schools of thought. There's the one which is the real structured, you know, methodical, meticulous little sections and the little scissors and you're cutting and building the shape. And then there's more of a free form French method that's visual. You look at it, you see what it was working and what isn't, and then you modify your approach and you cut until it looks right. And that lends itself to the razor very well. So two schools of thought, both equal in their application. This can do some things that this can, this can do some things that this can. If you have any questions or any kind of comments or anything you'd like to see, please leave that in a comment below. And Practice your razor, practice your scissor, and become better. Thank you so much for watching.